Good morning, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation. Um, we, tonight, we're, we're partnering with Stuart McPhee, um, who is a private trader. I'm sure you're going to enjoy tonight's presentation on developing a simple trading strategy. It's something that uh, we get asked quite a fair bit of questions on, so I um, hope you enjoy tonight's presentation. Just before we begin, Just a quick disclaimer that this presentation is educational in nature and that we won't be taking into consideration your personal financial circumstances. Um, if you wish to seek advice, please seek a external financial advisor or someone who's qualified in order to give um, advice. So trading CFDs and derivatives can be risky and losses may exceed your initial um, payment. Please take a moment to read through the rest of the disclaimer there. Okay, so just before we begin, um, I've noticed that there was a lot of new um, new clients who registered for this particular presentation. So what I like to do is just sort of run through a little bit about FP Markets and you know what products and services we offer. Um, the reason why we do that is a lot of new clients that we speak to uh, don't necessarily know what uh, breadth of you know products that we actually offer. So um, one of the things that we you know that we specialize in is direct market access CFDs. Um, so that means you can trade over. 10,000 individual stocks across seven different exchanges, you know, whether it's local Australian, ASX stocks, uh, US equities, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, you know, we, we've pretty much got the whole, um, whole whole gambit there. So, you know, it's something that, you know, we've built a heritage on, on the DMA execution, which means that, you know, all your trades are hedge um, when you're trading exchange traded products like um, direct market access CFDs, equities and futures. So one of the things that, you know, we've, we're known in the marketplace as well is our, you know, commitment to our traders by providing a high level of service as well as educational content. So we've been doing this for over 10 years now, regulated by ASIC and one of the things that uh, we've you know, pretty much offered clients recently is MT4. When I say recently, it's more so within the last, you know, two and a half years or so. Um, but we found that it's actually one of the more popular uh, product offerings that we have now because you can trade lots of different markets, especially the ones that trade 24 hours. Uh, we can trade, you know, very small contracts to sort of uh, get used to, you know, the price movements. And, um, you know, we've sort of seen over the last year or so, uh, there's been lots of, you know, big events that sort of have gone the other way that people would have expected, like Brexit, Donald Trump winning the election. Um, we've had some surprises as well with like the Brexit, uh, sorry, the pound flash crash and things like that. So, you know, we're sort of getting into that, um, you know, that time period again where we've got, you know, French elections and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, if you've just got local um, equities exposure, it might be a bit hard to sort of get that exposure into other markets. Hence, you know, we wanted to offer our clients a full breadth of different markets to trade from. So, uh, yep, so that's a little bit about FP Markets. Um, yeah, so tonight, you know, just want to quickly introduce Stuart McPhee. So, you know, Stuart's been around um, in the Australian marketplace for quite some time now, I think over 20 years where he's a private trader, best-selling author, uh, as well as a personal trading coach. So Stuart has traveled, you know, all around Australia and throughout Southeast Asia, you know, doing presentations to large audiences and he's you know, a very, very uh, renowned speaker, and he's got a, also a best-selling book as well, Trading in a Nutshell, uh, fourth edition. So you can see uh, the name of the book down there as well. And today, you know, Stuart's going to share a lot of the, um, you know, principles that has guided him through the markets, you know, both up and down markets. And I know uh, generally most traders who trade equity markets generally have a long strategy, uh, but they, they're not quite strong when it comes to, you know, sideways markets, choppy markets markets or downtrending markets. So, you know, when you sort of have like a basic outline of a trading plan, you know, you can pretty much apply it to, you know, in any market, you know, whether you're a short-term trader, long-term trader, uh, it just sort of sets up that framework there. And today, you know, Stuart's going to take you through some of the things that, um, that he looks at. And yeah, I'm very excited about today's presentation. So without further ado, let me um, switch over to Stuart. Just give us one sec. Okay, and then you'll see Stuart screen pop up. All right, Stuart, over to you. And hopefully a seamless, yeah, hopefully a seamless transition. Um, 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, Jimmy, thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction and the kind words. A very warm welcome to all those people. I'm actually a little bit humbled with, uh, I'm sure you don't disclose the number of people um, who attend these webinars, but it's certainly in three figures. So I'm very, very humbled that uh, all of you have chosen to spend uh, just a little bit of your Tuesday evening. It is Tuesday, isn't it? Tuesday evening uh, with me this evening. Also, thank you to FP Markets and, of course, uh, specifically Jimmy for the invitation and the opportunity to speak with you uh, this evening. I hope uh, what I provide you is uh, some food for thought and just a few things for you to go away and consider. Um, if you're not familiar with the GoToWebinar platform that we're, in fact, using uh, for this session, in that little control panel that would have opened up uh, when you first access the GoToWebinar or access the webinar, there is a little section called Questions and you're able to detach that or maximise it and it's in there that you can directly engage with me during the session. None of you are permitted or have privilege to uh, turn your microphone on and start um, asking questions uh, verbally but you're certainly more than welcome to access that questions area. I'll certainly do my best to just keep a sort of a little eye on any questions that may come through there. Even just if you want to say um, where you're listening from uh, this evening, uh, where you live, and even just to have a little practice of uh, using that questions area. Obviously, uh, my time is limited. Um, yeah, as Jimmy said, I, I have spoken a lot at different events, you know, from, you know, 10-minute sessions to one-hour webinars to, of course, full-day events and workshops over the course of a weekend. So, obviously, my time is limited this evening, but I'll do my very best to just run through a few things that I think are important when people want to put together a trading plan and actually implement that with some confidence. And that's the real key, isn't it? That um, we need to have sort of a, a structured uh, process and a structured approach, a very method, you know, very methodical approach uh, to the markets to really give ourselves the greatest chance of not just sort of you know, every now and again success, but sort of consistent performance and overall uh, success and sort of meeting those expectations that we set ourselves. So what I want to run through tonight is, I guess, two things. I know I've got an outline there, which is important in the presentation, but I want to just talk about some of my core beliefs and how I, you know, consider trading and how I view the markets. I think that's important for, for me to share that with you to give you some insight into what I value and what I think is important as opposed to what I don't think is as important, which may be a little bit counterintuitive. You know, we do focus a lot of energy and time and effort on things that really, um, in the long run, are really not that important. But we, if we don't know any better, uh, we really don't realise that we're, in fact, expending so much energy and time and effort on things that are probably not really that valuable. So I want to share some of my core beliefs and philosophy, if you will. Uh, and then I just want to talk through a very simple process for helping you develop a, a strategy that you will actually implement with confidence. And it really doesn't matter what products you wish to apply those to, whether you know, you, you're going to trade currencies or uh, whether you're going to more trade equities and CFTs on equities and trade long and short and what have you. I think the process is very similar. Um, and I think the process is very important. Uh, one thing I want to share with you just before we really get going is that, um, you know, I've been doing this a while now and I certainly don't think I'm a master by any stretch, but I seem to learn a little bit more every year. And I think that's what we need to strive for is that in 12 months from now, what's the date today? 18th of April. On the 18th of April 2018, I think we want to see, have seen some improvement. We want to sort of work towards that constant gradual improvement. And I can assure you this trading thing doesn't happen overnight and not even remotely close um, to happening for you and all sort of unlocking and becoming very clear to you overnight. It is a very long process uh, to sort of um, learn what is important and sort of develop that discipline and structure and you know ad adherence to the rules and what have you. So which brings me on to my sort of the last point in my introduction before I get into it, and that is just to share with you a very simple personal story. Um, and that is, I've got, I'm very lucky, I have uh, three gorgeous, beautiful daughters, I'm a very lucky man, and my eldest daughter is only a few weeks away from turning 16, um, which sends shutters down some fathers, I'm sure. And uh, anyway, she's not far away from turning 16, and already she has booked in for her learner's permit. 
right, to get her learner's permit so she can start to learn to drive. So she started to show some interest when in the car of, you know, how I do things and why I'm doing it, what the flashing light means and what are all the letters on the automatic transmission, all these things she's taking some interest in. But then she asked the question of, hey, Dad, is driving easy? Is it difficult? Is it easy? And I thought, well, that's a pretty good question. And I thought to myself for a second, I really need to, um, I really need to, you know, you know, provide a parental, you know, serious, responsible answer. So I gave a very simple answer. And I remember something my mother used to say to me, and she used to say, if something was easy, everybody would be doing it. So I thought to myself, basically everybody has a driver's license, so it can't be that difficult. And I think of that in terms of trading. I don't think trading is that easy at all. Um, and I think anybody who believes it is easy is probably being misled a little bit. Um, I think trading is relatively straightforward and it has relatively straightforward and simple concepts, but the actual execution or implementation or sticking to those time tests of principles and us actually implementing what we need to do, that's where the difficulty and that's where the challenge arises within uh, trading. So is trading easy? Uh, no, I don't think it's even remotely close uh, to being easy. It is very much a journey that we travel along uh, to, again, constant, gradual improvement. Okay, let me uh, just get going. Um, again, I'm not really, obviously, uh, I'm not standing in front of the audience live and, and get instant feedback on things. So it's, I'm not just going to go out on a limb here and say that maybe some of us haven't had much experience in trading, while some of you obviously may have had some um, you know, extensive experience and been in the market for many years. But I just want to share with you some of the beliefs or what I believe to be very, very important. And probably the number one thing is the importance of having a plan. And I think anybody who believes they can trade successfully without a plan, um, I, I, that's just beyond me. I, I, I don't know what people would base that sort of belief on. I believe it is paramount, right? It's imperative that you develop a plan that is absolutely right for you and resonates with you and works with you and is, and is comfortable. You know, it, uh, it just sits comfortably with you. And what that means, of course, is we may all develop ever so slightly different trading plans, but they just work for us as an individual. And one of the things that I find with trading generally is that people believe trading is activity. It's doing lots of things. We think about investing, we think about buying shares in BHP or Telstra or whatever it might be, and we certainly don't think about selling them tomorrow. Uh, we take a much longer term view um, perhaps on buying those equities. Whereas trading is very different. Uh, we don't intend on locking something in the bottom drawer like a marriage, right, for better or worse, and just holding on to them forever. Um, with trading, we are going to take a more active role in, you know, if something works out for us, we'll hold on to it for a while. If it starts to not work out or if it doesn't work out right from the beginning, we look to to, to cut that and move on to the next trade. It's certainly a little bit more active. But one of the things that I think people can very easily fall into the trap of is believing that trading is incredibly active and I need to be looking at a screen for 10 hours a day and looking at numbers flashing and looking at prices changing and, and making decisions quickly but making a lot of decisions regarding trading. Now, people can trade that way, no doubt. There's, there's no problem with that, but it's certainly not for everybody and I would suggest the majority don't trade that way. So again, it comes back to all us finding an approach, a methodology that works for us and suits us. And if you're not going to trade every day, that's fine if that works for you and suits you and, and sits comfortably with you. You don't have to trade every day. Um, you know, so trade frequency and you know how often we look at things very is very much a personal individual decision. I just wanted to make that uh, very clear. Um, so with regards to trading, I believe it is very much a process. It is very much a rules-based activity. And really that trading plan document that I talk about is simply a compilation of your trading rules. That's all it is. And trading rules play a very important role because what they do is protect you from yourself. They protect you from routinely making very silly decisions, irresponsible decisions in the market. That's what trading rules are designed to do. Um, so, of course, first step is developing those rules, and that's what I'm going to talk about briefly this evening. But 
probably the larger challenge to us individually is actually then executing that and adhering to those rules to the letter and being ruthless and being incredibly disciplined and structured and professional about them. And of course, that's a, a whole nother topic. Uh, that's the six inches in between your ears. It's all a mindset, a psychology uh, type, or psychological endeavor that we need to tackle. And it's probably something we really don't appreciate when we start out day one. We really don't even know about or certainly don't respect the amount of uh, um, the, the role or the influence that our emotions will play on us and our mindset and the like. So we really just need to define and follow a plan. The plan is looking for high probability, not profitability. Profitability will take care of itself. To me, trading is a numbers game. It's looking for probability with good reward to risk. Right? It's looking for probability. And I'll just quickly go to a chart and all I've got here, and I'll just wait for that for a second, hopefully it pops up on your screen, and I've just literally, in preparation for tonight, just open up the XJO. But let's just pretend it is in fact a chart that we want to trade. I know we can trade indices, let's say it's a stock or something like that. But um, look, any form of analysis, whether it be fundamentals or you know, technical analysis or whatever we do to, to look or use as a, a tool to identify opportunities in the market, all we're trying to do is at the right hand edge of that chart, we are trying to determine what is most likely to happen next. Isn't that right? That's all we're trying to do. What is now most likely to happen? Likely being the key word, which ties back into probability. Not what will happen, what's certain to happen, what's guaranteed. It's simply what is most likely to happen. Any form of analysis is leading us to the point of right hand edge what is most likely to happen. And if we can determine what we believe based on you know, research and a lot of testing and previous trading results, if we can determine what is most likely to happen, or we can speculate on that likelihood and we speculate in the form of opening up our FP markets platform and opening a trade and placing a trade on. That's how we take advantage of that, um, of that probability of that likelihood that we speculate by opening trades. But of course, the key to all that is that we get a lot of trades wrong that don't work out and they don't move where we expected them to do, which is why managing the risk is so critical. And I'm not really even going to talk about managing risk tonight, but the reality is it's a very important part of our strategy, um, and that is how we manage our money, how we manage our exposure to risk. As soon as you, you know, take your money from an account and put it into a trade and open up a CFD on something, um, you're now exposed to risk and and managing and you know controlling that risk and understanding the numbers, the expectation and the probability and reward to risk is a really, really important part of trading well over the long term. And it's these sorts of areas, day one of trading, you have no idea about any of this. All you know is that Telstra is a company and I've heard of BHP and ANZ and I can buy shares or I can buy CFDs and, and then we learn about that not only can we go long, and benefit from a rising price and when the price falls we can also make money so we learn about that and then we try to work about you know work out strategies and how we're going to get and look for these opportunities and we're just completely oblivious to this incredibly important component of trading well and that's actually managing our risk so again an area I'm not going to talk about a lot tonight but please I cannot overstate the importance of risk management and understanding expectation and probability. And as I said, I think trading is very much a numbers game. It's managing those numbers and there's really key, sorry, four key numbers. Again, I'm not going to talk about these anymore, but four key performance numbers as I call them. And that is the percentage of profitable trades, the percentage of losing trades, your average profit and your average loss. They're the four critical numbers when it actually comes down to performance and whether you actually make money or not. I'll say it again, percentage of profitable trades, percentage of losing trades, your average profit and your average loss. And it's when we manage and work with those numbers that we can have a, a strike rate, a percentage of profitable trades as low as 30, 35, 40% yet still make money um, because we manage the other numbers. Uh, again, very, very important part of trading, it's certainly an important part of developing a plan and um, and obviously developing a strategy. I, I am a technical analyst, um, obviously I mentioned fundamentals before, I look at charts, I love the clarity of charts, I love looking at something like this 
Um, it's just pure numbers. Uh, to me, it's pure, uh, pure data. And for every period of time, of course, we have OHL CV, open, high, low, close. And uh, depending on what product we're trading, of course, we may have volume as well. Certainly all equities and exchanges track volume when it comes to shares. So all of these numbers um, can be, you know, relied upon and we can do calculations on and actually lead us to identifying technical conditions in charts that we want to see um, for us to take a trade and of course that's what I'm about to uh, lead into very, very shortly. Why I like technical analysis, as I said, is because it's pure numbers and there's, there's little room for sort of interpretation or misinterpretation in the numbers. The numbers are very pure. And if a price is falling from 2 down to 190, down to 180, down to 170 and so forth, it's a very pure uh, sort of uh, illustration or um, a very pure story of what is happening with that particular stock. There may be an incredibly massive story going on of why, you know, there's been a lot of supply and a lot of people selling shares, but the pure numbers tell me almost everything I need to know. Um, and that is, it's a lot of supply and not a lot of demand. and I'm either going to short it or I'm certainly not going to uh, buy it. And my three C words when it comes to trading, consistency in everything we do, and hopefully time permitting right at the end, I'll just revisit consistency and the importance of that. Comfort is from a risk tolerance point of view, and that is you being comfortable with the level of risk you're taking is really more important than, again, we probably give it credit for. And then what that means is, you and I may take exactly the same trade, but when we go to bed tonight, um, you might lie awake thinking about it or wake up at 2 a.m. and actually start to think about it. Um, and I'm sleeping you know, very, very well because even though we have the same trade on, our tolerance to risk is very different. Um, so even things like that, just comfort, and then of course confidence in the trading plan we develop and obviously our own ability to execute that plan. I very want to quickly go through this. Give me 30 seconds. Trading to me is all process, it's all methodology, it's all following rules, following a process, following a logical step-by-step -step process of looking for new opportunities, managing the numbers, you know, identifying exit levels, identifying trade size, executing and then managing that trade. To me it's a very rules-based activity. Um, uh, it can make it a little bit boring in that sense but I think that's what good trading is all about and traders are very good at what they do. Uh, I mentioned before about um, you know, I don't think trading is easy. Um, it does really take a lot of time. You know, people would have heard of that 10,000 hours theory of developing a certain level of competence in an activity. And I don't think trading is really that far off. Traders are very good at what they do. They certainly take it very seriously and treat it seriously. They don't treat it like a hobby. They treat it like a profession. And even that simple use of a word profession versus hobby can completely change your mindset of how you approach this. And is it a hobby? that eventually just costs you money but takes up some time and you enjoy it, but you actually don't make any money, you lose it? Or is it a profession and something we you know, do well at and take it seriously and actually end up uh, making money? Very simple terms, um, your trading plan, and now we're leading towards some of my beliefs with analysis and how we put rules together. To me, your trading plan is just simply answering three questions. Uh, that's all it is. Um, I think these will become quite obvious. And if you don't have a plan, I cannot again overstate the importance of having one. Um, and I know it can be daunting in putting one together, but it's essential. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of an absolute word. It is 100%. I don't know how you can trade consistently well uh, without having this process and this logical sequence and routine that you follow, um, managing risk and you know, sticking to your rules and the like. So very simply, question number one is how do you find new opportunities? What will present to you an opportunity to trade long or short? Um, you know, under what conditions will you enter a trade? Number three is obvious because it's the opposite of that. Number two, however, first is when we make a decision to, to enter something and to, to short the Australian dollar or to buy gold or whatever it might be, Again, it comes back to managing risk. How do we allocate capital? How many CFDs are we going to trade? How many contracts, lots, units, shares, whatever term is applicable to your platform and your trading and your account, how do you determine how much, in fact, what 
amount or what number that will be. It is such an important part of managing risk and that is simply the allocation of capital to individual trades. Now a very simple way of doing that is of course just to always trade the same number of CFDs or always allocate the same amount of money uh, to each individual trade. That is one way of doing it. I'm suggesting you can do that a lot better than that. That's not the greatest way to do it, but it is a way. And um, and then of course, the opposite of all that is under what conditions do we get out? And the getting out is obviously either one of two conditions. Either the trade has not worked out and we need to just say, look, this hasn't worked. Let's get rid of it and move on to the next. Or of course, more positively and more happily, uh, that it is, has actually moved in your favour and we need now to make a decision to, to lock in that profit, close the trade and, and uh, see our account balance just go up a little bit as the money, the funds are returned into our account. Very, very simply, however, the importance for these are reversed. Again, for a lot of you, I don't think I'm telling you anything new, but it is important to just be reminded of the emphasis that so many people place on strategies and analysis and how do I find the next trading opportunity. So many people focus on that, wherein the reality is the really important parts of trading are allocation of capital and what happens once you are in the trade. Uh, and I cannot again overstate the importance of what happens once you're in the trade. You can trade very, very well, in other words, looking for opportunities and getting into trade for all the right reasons, but completely mess it up once you're in it. And it happens on a regular basis. And we've all done it. Anyone who's traded has done that. Um, and you know, perhaps more often than we'd like to admit. But we've traded, we've entered those trades for all the right reasons. The analysis worked out, uh, it was a perfect pattern, the indicators did this, the moving averages did this, whatever it might be, we've entered for all the right reasons but we've just completely made a mess of it once we're in the trade. Again, I cannot overstate the importance of how do you get out of those trades. Okay, last slide before I now get into more practical, let's develop a strategy, let's develop rules. Obviously in the time that I have tonight, I'm not gonna teach you how to trade. Um, I would like to think that's obvious, but I think just running through some of these things that I believe to be very, very important, and then the next little section of how do we go through putting rules together, I think is, I would like to think is a, if it's a lot more value to you um, than just showing you a couple of moving averages crossing over and showing you, telling you you should use those. So these are my beliefs and I could spend half an hour on each of these and obviously I cannot do that tonight. But I believe these are very, very important. The first one I've already mentioned and that is to me good trading is very much process. It's very much following a logical step-by-step -step process or routine and working our way through. I'll actually show you uh, the template I use for that uh, a little bit later on. I very much believe in consistency and aiming for consistency. Again, I spoke about those key performance numbers. We need to place the odds, the probabilities in our favour. We need to have the numbers in our favour. And the example I always use is of a casino and a roulette table. Casinos are the greatest exponents or you know, advocates of consistency because the games and certainly the roulette of which I have a basic understanding of, right? the odds are always the same, the payout is always the same, right? whether it's red or black or odds and evens or first 18 or second 18 or whatever it might be, the odds are very, they're always set, they're always the same. And there's no secrets to them, right? we know what those odds are and in fact when you look at them, you know, it's two to one on red or black, you think that's fair. Um, because there's reds and the other half are black. But of course, there's one thing that the casino has in their favour, and that's a zero or a double zero, or both, um, at the end of the table, and that ever so slightly places the odds in their favour. Now, they know that. We know that too, but maybe we don't think about that. But those odds being ever so slightly in their favour then allows them to apply that edge Right, and have that probability and performance numbers in their favour and they applied every single time that white ball is thrown onto the roulette spinny thing, the table thing. Um, they apply that all the time because they know at the end of the day they're going to make money. We know casinos don't lose money. They do pretty well and it's because they have that edge and I think we can learn something from that. I really do believe that we can develop a set of rules that gives us a similar edge because we know through validation, through testing, through actual real trading and seeing results, 
we can develop an edge as well. And if we can apply that edge with incredible consistency and not deviating away from that and, and not sort of making up the rules as we go and being very indiscriminate and random in the way we trade, we can have that same sort of advantage. To me, again, that's what good trading is all about. Um, and just quickly, if I may, just go back uh, to a chart. Um, again, just picture this as anything. Too many people for me look at a chart like this and unfortunately they don't know what they are looking for. But they know they need to look at a chart because you know, they've, they've seen people do that and they've heard about that. So sure enough, let's begin this process of looking at this chart. Now I can do a number of things with this. I can zoom out and I can zoom back in again. Right, I can apply some indicators to the chart. Maybe I can draw some lines and I know with the index at the moment it's uh, you know had some key levels, probably not 5650, but 5800 I know. And I might just, uh, I made a mistake there, 5,600. Um, so I know there's some levels there with some common points and what have you, and maybe I could draw a trend line up through here and place some indicators. I like could spend a few minutes having a bit of fun with this, and but I'm certainly no closer to making a decision on what I need to do with this. And unfortunately for me, too many traders trade randomly. They just trade indiscriminately. And they will just look at a chart hoping that something becomes obvious, hoping that they see something that might trigger a thought, oh, I remember learning about that pattern or I remember learning about that candlestick and I remember that if you did that and the candlestick did that, I need to do this, I need to short or I need to go long or something like that. We just hope something becomes obvious. We don't know what we are looking for specifically, but we're actually hoping something pops out. Even if we need to tilt our head a little bit to the left, and I'm actually doing it now as I speak, a little bit to the right to sort of line up the candlesticks or line up my trend line or something. I just want to find something in this chart. And of course, I could do this for the next 10 minutes. And then of course, I'm only on stock AAZ or AAD or whatever the first one is, and I've got another 200 to go or 500 or however it may, it may be. And it's an incredibly inefficient way, of course, of doing this. But again, if we don't know any better, we think this is what trading is. Right, it's looking for, um, you know, it's looking for those sort of uh, opportunities. Um, so, to me, that's indiscriminate. It's random. It's not a very good way uh, to trade. I need to quickly whip through these because I need to. Obviously, my time time is very quickly uh, escaping. Um, let's just bear with me for a second. Uh, less is more. Um, look, I'm obviously speaking to or being um, speaking for a broker tonight in FP markets. So I'll be uh, mindful of, of that. But by saying less is more, what I am referring to is, again, I think trading, people can think about activity. And the more I trade, the more opportunity I give myself to make money. I really do believe the less you trade, the better your trading will be. Right? So I believe less is more. Less trading is actually better for you. Now, that is, in fact, in the long run, that's good for the broker because no good you trading a lot, losing lots of money and they lose you as a client. You lose money, they lose you as a client, it's lose-lose. Um, if you can trade less but hang around longer, it ends up being a win-win because the longer you can stay in the game, the greater chance you have of actually doing well out of this. And of course, the broker wins as well because you hang around as a client. So again, I don't think that's obvious. I don't think that's intuitive to think that trading less is actually better for you because I think a lot of people think of activity. Best trades take time. Um, you know, very rarely we get, in, get into something and immediately sort of responds and does everything we want it to do. I'll talk about trading things in isolation or using things in isolation uh, very quickly uh, soon. Uh, keeping it simple, I'm a firm believer in simplicity in trading and developing strategies. Again, I think that's counterintuitive. I think once people realise that trading is not as easy as they thought it was going to be, we instinctively think or intuitively think that we need to develop a complicated, complex set of rules to have any chance of being successful. Furthermore, if we are presented with a very simple approach, we almost dismiss it as, oh, well, that, that can't work because trading is more difficult than that. I know because I've already traded and lost some money. And you're just telling me all I need to do is that? No, I don't believe that right? because I know trading is more difficult. So we almost dismiss simple approaches with no basis other than we believe trading is more complicated, therefore we need to be complex and complicated in our approach. 
I very much believe in simplicity. Uh, Jimmy mentioned my book, of which uh, I'd like to think at least one of you may have a copy of it, uh, now in its fourth edition, Trading in a Nutshell. Whenever I uh, sell a book, literally just post it out to someone or at an event and someone buys one, I always write three words before I sign my name and they, those three words are right there. And I've been doing that for probably more than 10 years. I always write, keep it simple. Right? Simple works. Uh, so simple makes it easier for us to implement um, and simple can in fact work. And one thing that I do believe is as people, as humans, it's simple to be hard and hard to be simple. Right? It's very easy for us to complicate things and unfortunately it's very difficult for us to simplify things. And in trading I think we need to simplify. And finally, and this lends myself back to what I meant with technical analysis, and that is the benefit of data-driven decisions. Technical analysis is all about having data-driven decisions. The largest companies in the world have people working for them who just simply look after data. You know, they call it business intelligence or analytics and what have you, and all they do is track data. And that data can be used by decision makers to actually drive direction, drive policy, drive where the company is going to go in the next year or whatever it might be, simply through data. I believe as technical analysis, we can have, or technical analysts, we can have a very similar approach where data drives decisions we make. Now, you may have noticed, just on the top of this chart here of the XJ, I've got this red line here. And this is probably the first little tool that I'll share with you this evening. This is my volatility percentage indicator. And I can apply this on any, any instrument, whether it be a currency pair or an index or a stock. And all it's doing is measuring the volatility of, in other words, the price movement of the product as a percentage of its own value. Um, so yes, I use average true range, ATR, to, use, or to measure that volatility, but no good me finding out that the average true range value for sort of BHP is 45 cents, but for Telstra it's only 5 cents. And I think, oh, BHP is you know, sort of nine times more volatile than Telstra. But then if I bring in the actual price, I realise that it sort of levels out the playing field. So I have this percentage indicator here, and in this particular case, I'm tracking the volatility of the index. And what I can tell you is, for the most part, um, that particular value stays under 1.5, which to me is sort of normal. Um, but every now and again, the red line here, as you can see, and hopefully that's coming up nice and clear on your screen, every now and again, that indicator breaks up through 1.5 and, and reads greater than that. Um, and that tells me that the index itself is moving beyond normal sort of range. It's really been quite volatile. And back in the GFC in 2008, the index actually got um, above 4%. If you remember back in those days, the market was just crazy. I'm not afraid to use the word stupid. It was just ridiculous. The market would be up 6% one day and then down 7 the next and then it'd be back up. It was just stupid. Um, so I can track that. And that can help me drive decision making. And if I have a simple tool like this where if I say, look, the index goes above a particular level, a threshold, I'm out. I'm just going to stay out until it just cools off a little bit. Just a simple little rule like that. That's having data drive decision making. Um, now, that's a very simple, short example. But we can have many things like that driving our decision making uh, in the market. So I really believe in data driven decisions. Okay, let's just move on to more practical. To me, technical analysis is simply an approach. It's far from perfect. It can be very complicated and mathematical, but I very much believe in simplicity. Um, certainly software allows it to be very complicated and mathematical because now we can have all these indicators. Have you ever seen the formula for the directional movement indicators as an example or the parabolic SAR? They're incredibly complex. Um, well, years ago, we didn't have those things because we didn't have the computation, but now we do, so it opens up to all these indicators. It really can be quite complex and complicated, some technical analysis, but I really do believe in simplicity. And again, all we're trying to do is increase chance, increase probability of profitability. That's all we're trying to do. And the example I mentioned about complicated, I put up this chart here, and again, hopefully that uh, comes through okay on your screen. And that is, you know, this mess. Um, as Jimmy mentioned in my intro, I have done a lot of personal coaching many years ago. And every now and again, I'd walk into someone's home and say, right, how do you trade? Show me your charts. Let's, let's get going. 
and they'd bring up a chart like this. Now, I've obviously had a bit of fun putting this together a few years ago because people can do this. They'll just whack every indicator they can and they heard about another one the other day from someone else, so they'll throw that on as well. Uh, and this, this gets ridiculous. And this, to me, has nothing to do with trading and nothing to do with technical analysis. This, to me, is just playing with software. That's all you're doing. You're just mucking around and taking the mickey out of it all. Um, to me, I love clarity of charts and definitely keep, um, you know, keep things very, very simple, uh, as I hope you'll find. Okay, let's talk about some practicalities. Um, we'll talk about this quickly, and then I'm going to go into uh, look at some charts and just show you that process of how we can do this. Firstly, identifying time frame. I mentioned right back at the beginning about different people trade different ways. Um, we can trade different time frames. Doesn't mean that's right or wrong. We just need to find something that works for us. All of us have some vision of how we want to trade. Um, so what I've said here in this particular table, look at the right-hand column under average trade duration. All of us can probably put ourselves in a category of how long we want that sort of ideal profitable trade to be whether it's minutes to hours or hours to days or days to week. And in fact, you could go a next step and go weeks to months if you're trading a little bit more conservatively, you know, some more medium term with shares, which I do with my super fund and have for many, many years. But we can all sort of put ourselves in one of those categories. And then we can assign ourselves a sort of trading style, if we call it. And once we've assigned ourselves a trading style, then we can sort of narrow down our focus into a using a periodicity, right, a chart periodicity which can best suit that particular trading style. So again, we think about activity and we think, oh, to trade well, we've got to be using one minute charts or five minute charts because that's the action and that's where things are happening and I can really see the, the markets move and, well, I don't waste my time looking at five minute charts because it doesn't suit my trading style. But again, that may not be obvious because we may think that's important and we need to be watching a one minute chart or a one second, heaven forbid, or a five minute chart or something like that because we think we need to see the market moving, but again, I think it's very important to narrow our focus down to what best suits our particular trading style. Okay, let's just go to, just I did a couple of quick scans uh, uh, before uh, this evening started, and you can see here, just using this software, this is the real number crunching uh, part of this software, and you can see a number of the things have my own name here. There's a scan for the volatility percentage. In fact, what I'll do just quickly because uh, it really won't uh, take uh, very long at all. I'm just going to scan the top 50 using my volatility percentage tool. I'm literally doing this uh, unprepared, but again, it shouldn't take long. As I said, this is the number crunching part of this particular software. Um, and what I'm able to do is very easily scan through a number of securities looking for criterion, or I can collate a lot of data, um, which might be important to me. But I just wanted to show you this as an example of that volatility tool that I mentioned. This is the top 50 stocks. Again, hopefully that report has come through. I know it's a little bit small on the text, but um, at the moment it's in reverse alphabetical order, there's in alphabetical order, this is just the top 50 as an example. But in the second column it actually provides you the volatility percentage of each of those stocks. So I've actually just rearranged them in order, we can see the least volatile stock, in fact the least two are two of the banks. In fact if you go to four and five, sorry five and six, in the, in the six least volatile stocks in the market you actually have the four big banks as an example. So ANZ you can see there, on average, over time moves 1.48% per day, on average. That is important information. I can use that information. It can help me set stops. Um, if I know it moves 1.48% a day, I can use that uh, information. If I rearrange these, we can see that the most volatile stock in the top 50 is in fact Fortescue, a little bit under 4%, and then we've got 3.6 and then 3, and as you can see, all but three stocks in the top 50 are in fact less than 3%. In fact, if you go top, all but the four, so 46 out of the 50 are in fact less than 2.5%. So it gives you some idea of the volatility of each of those stocks. Anyway, back to my point before about, I did this quick scan, and what this shows you here is all the stocks in the top 500 in your Lawner's Index. Again, I'll just wait for that report to appear on your screen, and all this shows you is all the stocks in the top 500, so this is not everything, right, just the top 500, that have moved more than 100% in the last 12 months. Now, we know, the even though the markets have got close to 6,000 
of late, we know the market is nowhere near moving 100% in the last 12 months. But at the top 500, again, this is not everything, just the top 500. So these are the least volatile, most stable stocks in the market. About 20, and I'm just roughly guessing there, around 20 of those in the last 12 months have moved more than 100%. And in fact, if I click on this 400 column, we can see that these four at the top have in fact moved in more than 400%. Can you believe that? In the last 12 months, excuse me. Um, now, one in particular I know, and that is Whitehaven. So I know that's moved between two and 300%. We'll just have a look at this. And to me, the whole process of looking for opportunities is looking at charts like this and making observations. That's all we're trying to do. And if this is the sort of trade you would have wanted to have been in, all we need to do is say, at what point would we have wanted to have ended that trade? Realistically, being reasonable about this, no good just saying, oh, at the low point, because then you're being foolish. Uh, and that's just a fool's game, trying to identify the low points. But at some point where you would have been comfortable, where, okay, this has now changed direction, it's now moving higher, I have no idea it's going to go this well. But if I manage my exits well, and it does move that well, I can take advantage of that, full advantage of that. So at what point here would I have wanted to have traded that and got into that? Well, that's the first step. But then we need to say, so what rules, what technical conditions would have assisted us in getting in? And this is where we can apply our knowledge of technical analysis. We can apply our knowledge of indicators or volume or volatility or patterns. Um, for example, if I look at somewhere around here, I can see at this point here, it's probably achieved, hey, I'm just looking quickly at the, it's probably achieved around a six month high, as an example. So maybe buying something that has moved to a six month high may work. Now you can sit there and think, well, that, does, that sounds pretty straightforward, simple. Maybe that can't work because it's so simple. Well, the only way we'll find out is to either trade it for real or go and do some thorough back testing and test it or forward test it. And somehow we validate it. We prove or disprove this. But just identifying that particular point is not good enough. We obviously need to also set an appropriate exit level, should it not move out in our direction, but also an appropriate um, profit sort of exit, that if it in fact does move well, um, that we're actually able to enjoy a lot of that gain. And certainly in this particular case, once it did actually rise quite well, and geez, it did rise very well, um, back here June mid last year it was certainly well under a dollar and then quite comfortably got to three. And admittedly just the last few months it hasn't done much at all. So at some point we would have said enough is enough, it stopped moving, maybe the volatility rule drops down and it sort of drops in volatility and gives us a reason to get out. These are the sort of things that we need to put together and validate and prove or disprove and actually start to formulate rules. And one of the things that I found many, many, many times is a lot of people have very good knowledge of technical analysis. They, you know, a lot of people know technical analysis better than I do. They're real students of it. They understand the moving average perfectly. They understand all these other indicators. They understand the patterns. They know how to find them. What they don't know is how to narrow down their focus and just pick one or two components and develop a strategy. They feel because they've learned so much about so many indicators, it's obvious that, well, I need to use all those. I've learned about them. I'm going to use technical analysis, therefore I need to use all of those things. And I don't think that's the case at all. Because then you're opening yourself up to just way too many trading opportunities and not getting that casino's edge, right? Because we're often trading different ways and that doesn't give you that edge. Um, so again, if that's not obvious to us, we can easily go down that path. Just quickly, I wanted to show you this. Uh, one of the tools that I use, I will actually just pick a date in here somewhere, somewhere where we're talking. One of the tools that I use just for a concept and give you an idea of uh, the way it looks is my trailing ATR uh, stop. I've used this for many, 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 many years and used it uh, quite effectively. It does a terrific job for me. I wouldn't know what to do without it. Just make that a little bit thicker for you. So just a simple concept, you know, once we find these things, we need to be able to enjoy them if they do in fact move well. So this is the exit uh, system I use for my equities, more medium term sort of trading. And as each day passes, my red line continues to calculate and move. It only moves in the direction of the trade. Uh, that's what a trailing exit does. And sure enough, when price does in fact crumb down and close below, that's the decision to, of course, uh, exit, which right-handed to chart would have happened right around there. So 
I just visually for you, I wanted to give you an idea of something like that and what we can work towards in developing our rules. Now, if we're trading differently, we're trading currencies on a lot shorter term on hourly charts, well, you're not going to use something exactly like this, but you may use something very similar, just the distance and the, the sort of um, amount of leeway you give that price to move is obviously going to be smaller because you're trading on a smaller time frame, but the concept can be very similar uh, and that is, that's the concept of a trailing uh, stop. So the process, and I'm sorry I didn't get a little bit more time to go into this and maybe this is time for, and maybe time for another session or certainly a topic for another session, is just simply look at data, make observations on that charts and a lot of us have done this, but what we don't do is define rules on how to trade those and once we define those rules, and I can assure you this doesn't take 30 minutes, once we can start to put rules together, we can then validate those. We can improve or disprove, we can validate them. Uh, and I've had so many people over the years say, hey, sure, what do you think about me doing this and this? And I'll go, just go and test it. Well, it's an easy out for me. I, I can't authoritatively say, yeah, that'll work or no, it won't. I'll say, well, let's test it. Sounds like a great idea. I wouldn't have thought about that in a million years. But let's test it, let's validate it, let's prove or disprove it, and then we'll know. Um, that to me is how we work towards that process of actually having a strategy that we can implement with confidence. Um, again, I can't overstate the importance of having a set of rules that you have confidence in that you're able to implement and implement really quite easily because you've got so much confidence in it uh, and you know you have that edge. Um, anyway, so you know, obviously having software like this is important for the number crunching point of view, but again, it depends on your trading style. If you're trading five currency pairs, I heard Jimmy mention before about MT4, you don't need number crunching, you don't need scanning, you just have the five charts open and you look at them in turn and apply your rules and look for those opportunities that meet your rules and then of course do all the numbers and determine stop and how many CFDs you're going to trade and execute the trade. Um, you don't need that data and you don't need that number crunching. But if you're looking through 500 equities or as uh, you know, FP markets expose you to many exchanges and thousands literally of, of stocks, um, you don't want to be looking at every single chart one by one. Uh, you'll spend a whole week and still not be halfway through. Um, so, you know, certainly there are tools out there which make that job a, a little bit easier for you. Look, unfortunately, time is very quickly running out for me. Just, if I could just sort of just eke out a little bit more, what I mentioned about trading thing or not using things in isolation is that it's very easy for us to develop a strategy. We can say, look, if two moving averages cross over, we trade. That's it. There's your entry signal. Probably won't be the best entry signal, but it is an entry signal. And we struggle so much with sort of determining that entry signal. And I just gave you one, right? It took five seconds. But that's trading something in isolation because we can improve upon that by considering other things like key levels, like support and resistance, like other patterns, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, which may indicate a likely reversal, which is going to go against the moving average crossover or whatever it might be. We can combine a number of different components to provide ourselves a greater weight of evidence approach to looking for trading opportunities. So, yeah, look, every time you see a doji candlestick, you could trade, right? And dojis are very effective when it comes to currencies. But we can improve upon that. That would be trading something in isolation. We can improve upon that and make it a, you know, a higher quality signal by incorporating other things like trend and key levels to make that doji candlestick a far greater doji candlestick and a more effective uh, candlestick. Okay, look, it's already unfortunately past the, the 50 mark, 50 minutes in, um, and I did certainly promise Jimmy uh, some time at the end just to sort of wrap up and what have you. Um, obviously, as I said, I, I can't in this time possibly tell you everything and certainly can't teach you how to trade. I just wanted to talk about things and I even spoke a lot faster than I normally like to uh, simply because I felt like I needed to squeeze a few more things in. So um, I hope in, in any event, I hope I've provided you some food for thought. I feel like uh, there's certainly some scope here for a few more uh, topics that we can talk about and expand upon. But um, there's obviously the questions tab. I'm going to hang around even when Jimmy's talking. I'm going to hang around for as long as need be. If you want to just whack a question in there, I'd be more than happy to to respond to that. Um, again, uh, my core beliefs, you know, less is more. Simplicity to me is probably the biggest uh, one of those. But um, on that note, I probably just need to hand back to you, Jimmy, so you can, as a courtesy to our guests, uh, sort of wrap up by the end of the hour. Um, so if you just want to perhaps 
um, take back over and I'll uh, hand over to you if that's okay. Yep, we'll do. Thanks a lot, Stuart. Okay, so um, yeah, so I hope hope everyone found uh, you know the presentation tonight useful. I certainly did. You know, just looking at my own trading, um, I think I'm definitely on um, the higher end of the trades that really need to be, and often that uh, you know is a obviously good for the broker, but you know, when you sort of look at all the dumb trades that you make, it's only because you're generally over trading. And uh, I, I completely, completely understand, um, you know, where Stuart's coming from, from that, because when I had a look at my own trading and analyze a lot of the silly trades that I've made, it's often coming back on off when I'm overconfident, if I'm thinking that I'm trading on house money, you know, whatever that may be, and it's definitely not the right attitude to have. So um, just one of, one of the things that I just wanted to touch on was, um, you know, for a lot of new clients, you know, you often find that um, it's it's a bit daunting to sort of get into the market or, you know, you, you might not... Um, you might not, you know, have have the right, uh, you know, start or whatever that may be. So we want to make it a little bit easier for you. So one of the things that we uh, that we have today is an account opening um, bonus, where you know, if you open up an Iris trading account, uh, we'll drop your commission to one dollar minimum or 10 basis points until the end of May. Um, so you've got until the 5th of May to get your account up and running to really maximize that. And what that means is you can trade, you know, very little positions and it won't cost you much at all. So it's it's one of those offers that we put in place for a lot of, uh, you know, new traders, especially, you know, on the back of a presentation. And, you know, for, for your MT4 traders, you know, we are offering a $200 uh, deposit credit as well, where if you, you know, Deposit with a minimum of you know thousand dollars. We'll top it up up to two hundred dollars. Uh, now we'll convert you know every trade that you do. We'll convert every standard lot. I should say we'll convert twenty dollars of that uh, into cash, and we'll, we'll create that back into the account. So to find out more about that, just email us at sales at fpmarkets.com.au. And what I want to do is just sort of I can see there's a lot of um, questions that sort of have been uh, put through. So if you have any questions about, you know, your own trading experiences, anything that uh, you may feel Stuart might be able to help you with, or even just with um, the software that Stuart used tonight. So that's Metastock. You might uh, might have seen us feature it uh, quite a fair bit in our daily market report where we do the 60-day high and low scans. And, um, you know, that, that the software itself is so powerful and it saves so much time. Imagine having to sort of eyeball, you know, over 2,000 charts just to sort of identify the top, you know, 60, you know, or to, to identify any trades that are breaking out of their 60 highs or breaking below their 60-day lows. So it's one of those things where if you go to, you know, metastockaustralia.com.au forward slash FP uh, forward slash, you know, you... Muted. Uh, on there so uh, yep so if you let's you know if you have any questions please uh, please put them through and I'm um, sure you know if you if you want to jump back on and answer any of these please by do so I will sorry Jimmy I'm just going to say um, the site you just mentioned is ever so slightly incorrect it's oh. um it's right, metastockaustralia.com forward slash fp no no dot au oh, right. metastock australia okay forward slash FP yeah. um, and I have actually in the chat window I've already responded to quite a few questions so I'll hang around okay. if, if people have a few more questions I'll be happy to help. Perfect. We also noticed uh, people asking about the ebook, how to implement the trading process. So I'll certainly email that through, and uh, FP Markets can get that to you. Thank you, Short. Yeah. So what we'll do is um, towards the end of the week, we'll send out a thank you email with the recording of the presentation, and we'll include the ebook um, in there as well. So uh, it's going to be, you know, great value. If you have any questions, again, you know, you know where to contact um, Stuart. Okay, sure. I think there's a question there. Do you assess your discretionary trades against all your system entries? <laughs> yeah, that was the next one I was just about yeah. to respond to, but I'm happy to do it. Um, so someone actually asked previously about, um, is there any discretion in my decision making? Absolutely there is. I'm not a huge believer in automation at all. Um, and I have actually done a bit of research for my own benefit on the value of automation, and I was certainly scared off it initially. 
and probably remain scared of it. Uh, just that lack of control and um, thinking that something can just work all the time, which I just think is unrealistic. So um, there is absolutely discretion, but we're talking about the software. So when it comes to equities, the software does a huge amount of work for me. So there's a lot of mechanics in that, and there's a lot of number crunching and data crunching. So you know, if we scan the top 500 stocks, I may only be presented with five at the end. That's it. So I then have the discretion on those last five, and I may pick zero, or I may pick one or two. I probably won't pick five, but I'll pick one or two. So there is discretion in that. But there was a lot of sort of automation in the sense of I didn't even look at the 495 others because the software just said, look, they don't meet your criteria, and I'm not going to waste your time. That, to me, is the efficiency of good trading, is not even looking at something unless it's a chance. So, um, oh, sorry, so someone's mentioned about the chat windows. I probably should go through my answers because I've actually replied to those individuals who asked the questions. Um, so thank you, that's a fair point. Good feedback. Um, so that someone said about discretion, I just simply said, look, definitely some discretion. I'm definitely not 100% mechanical, but the software does a lot of work for me. Someone asked about return. And I said, you know, what can we reasonably expect? And I said, it depends a lot on what products you're trading and therefore what leverage you're using. I think outperforming the market is a very, very good start, but I do believe you can do a lot better than that in time. Uh, not day one, but uh, over time and perhaps, you know, along the journey, we're certainly going to be able to do that. Otherwise, of course, we come back and question why we're wasting our time uh, in the first place. And I'm also very careful about not not using the word promise, but saying, oh, yeah, you can achieve this because I don't want to set unrealistic expectations. Because, um, again, I really don't, that's, you know, bordering on that sort of advice and I really don't know, you know, what sort of attributes you have and what chance you have in any event. Uh, so I'm mindful not to sort of give you, oh, yeah, you can make 80% easy because I don't think that's necessarily applicable uh, to all. Um, so do you assess your discretion trades against all system entry? Unfortunately, I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, someone asked about the implementing the trading process ebook. Yes, I whipped that together and uh, we'll get that to Jimmy and I'm sure FV Markets will get that out to you. Where you can buy my book, there's actually a site, tradinginanutshell.com. Um, in fact, I'm just waiting for some more to come to my office and I'm going to post some out tomorrow. Hopefully, it's certainly available as an ebook. Uh, which you can go through Amazon and find it. My website is currently down at the moment. It's simply my name, stuartmcfee.com, but there's nothing there at the moment. Um, there is a lot there, but it's not available but this very second. Um, so someone asked about the separate chat window, which hopefully I've now gone through and responded very briefly to uh, all the other questions that have come through. Excellent. Thank you, Stuart. Um, okay, so, you know, if there isn't any, I think Stuart covered off uh, a lot of the questions there in, in the chat. So, again, I hope everyone has, um, you know, has gotten a lot of value out of this. And, again, you know, when we send out the information, um, I'll include a link to um, Stuart's sites, um, both the Metasoft one as well as, um, you know, one to Trading in a Nutshell as well. So you'll be able to, um, yeah, you know, either purchase a book or find out a little bit more information um, there. So, again, thank you, everyone, for your time tonight. Uh, again, you know, it's been a pleasure and, you know, Stuart, uh, really do appreciate your time tonight as well and presenting, you know, and sharing as much of the information, uh, you know, as much as you did today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening.